Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a live Q&A. We have done this for, well, a couple weeks now. Last week was the Spring Spectacular on the Dice Tower. Starting next week, I will be not doing this q and I'll be doing it every other week from now on, and the other week um, will be done by someone else here in the studio, mostly because I'm going to be doing my new podcast with Eric on Mondays, and I don't want to do this and that in the same day. So I'll be recording with Eric at 3 p.m. Um, starting next week, that's at the table <clears throat> with Tom and Eric. Now, this is not even a Monday. Today's a Tuesday. But we didn't, ha we didn't have anything on the Dice Tower yesterday, so I'm doing my live Q&A today. This is where I just answer questions from the Internet, talk about different things, various whatever, whatever, whatevers. And uh, I don't answer every question, but I answer a lot of them. So go ahead and ask some questions. So I start with the questions uh, na -na now. Um... Let's see. Um, so, if you've already asked a question, you got to re ask it. So, I'm only taking the very first question here, and then we'll do this. Um, how was the trip to see the girls? I went and saw my two daughters in college, Amy and Melody. It was good. I had a good time. Was able to spend pretty much three full days with them, just uh, me and them, basically, uh, just hanging out in the Pensacola area in Mobile, Alabama. Went and saw the battleship there, um, and uh, yeah, it was a good time. Really enjoyed it. Tom, you mentioned a Tainted Grail house rule you use when you play solo. Can you elaborate? That is, um, uh, that is um, not something that... Uh, it's not a house rule, it's a rule that they made. And basically, you, you, it's just a way to skip all the in-between little uh, slumbers that, that they call them. I do each slumber once, the first time it shows up. After that, uh, I'm not doing them anymore because you do the same one over and over again. And that got to, it felt like busy work to me. Uh, I don't answer questions on when I'm gonna do a review usually. They just go up when I do them. Um, or what do I think about a specific game? If I ha if I play a game, I will either review it or I will go up and with my, my mini reviews. At the very least, I'll put a ranking on Board Game Geek at some point. But so we have lots of reviews that are scheduled. I got reviews going up this week. I got reviews going up next week. I already have many of the ones from next week scheduled and stuff. So you'll see a lot of reviews coming. How's the audio upgrade going? It seems like since you mentioned on Kickstarter, it's a much more noticeable about any. I don't know what that means. I don't understand that sense, but I'm assuming you're going to say it's worse. It's possible. Um, we are in the middle of getting the other studio ready, and so that's a bunch of steps. And I'm holding off on the ma a major audio upgrade until we get the other studio ready because we will just do them both at the same time then. Do you know if there are still spots available on Dice Star Cruise? Yes, there will be spots available on Dice Star Cruise. Registration has not opened up yet. We'll announce when it does. Think sometime in May. We'll try to give you a couple weeks ahead of time. Notice. What's my favorite orchestral instrument? I'm a big fan of combined instruments in general. So it's hard for me to pick like a specific instrument. Like I love the clarion call of a trumpet. And if I had to pick one instrument, it might be the trumpet, but the piano is very versatile. Piano can do things no other instrument can do. So it would probably be something like a trumpet, clarinet, or the piano. But I really like all the instruments, and I like the combination of those instruments. Let's see here. Same thing uh, people are asking about live plays. We just do whatever live plays we do. Um, and I'll announce them when they're up. But there's no... I, I get emails from people sometimes that at, say, will you do a review on this game or will you do a live play on this game? We just kind of pick what we pick. I, I feel like we do more reviews than anyone, maybe than everyone else. So we, we just try to get to them as quickly as we can. But we don't get to everything. And sometimes we don't get to stuff at all because we just don't have the time for it. That's even more so with playthroughs. When you were a kid, what was the best game you found at the thrift store? There was a lot of games I found at the thrift store. Maybe the best one I found was World Beaters. It's an older game, but I, that one has still stuck with me. 
What's my favorite genre pre-1970s music? Dixie. Did you back Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter? Yes, I did. Tom is talking about Etherfields, not Tainted Grail. Oh, oh, I am talking about Etherfields. And you said Tainted Grail. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase then. I don't know why I was talking about Etherfields. Um, Tainted Grail, my house. What's my house around Tainted Grail? I think I just kind of, I kind of go blah, 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 through fights after a while. I think that's what it was. After a while, I get to a fight. I'm like, yeah, I either won or whatever, because I'm more interested in the story than in the fights. The fights are okay, but I'm much more interested in exploring and finding things. No, I didn't record a Double Trouble review when I was up with my daughter. With Dice Tower tonight ending, is there any plans for a future iteration of a night show in a Dice Tower? There's not one currently. Um, I like the idea of night shows, but we particularly want to work somewhat normal hours, and so we don't often do that many night shows. We've also found that the majority of people who watch live shows, watch them during the day. There's just... That's the straight up truth of it. Do you feel that the spectacular sometimes aren't worth it considering the lack of content the days before and after? No, I think the spectaculars are worth it. Now you say the lack of content the days before and after. It's the days after, we're, we take them off, but we should take off days over the course of a year anyway. I feel... I know that I err on the side of working too much, that I can push the Dice Tower too much. So I don't think I'm ever going to apologize about taking time off here in the Dice Tower. Uh, we need to take those days off, so doing it after a spectacular makes sense. Sure, there's not content, but we literally have thousands of videos for people to watch if you've missed something that we put up. And beforehand, there might be a few less videos going up. Not that many. Uh, there's a lot of videos that go up beforehand anyway. And I think the Spectaculars are interesting. No one else is doing anything like them. I like to do stuff nobody else does. I think the Spectaculars are fun for a lot of people, and they enjoy them. So, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, you must, since you, you've said it, and I'm sorry for that. But um, I like to break up and do different things over the course of a year. Um, no, I did not get the tent hammock. <laughs> We're considering getting a hammock. Um, Camilla's working on that, I think. What class have you chose for Tiny Tina? I've not played Tiny Tina very much at all. I just, I, I'm the mushroom dude. And that's the extent of it. I've not put any kind of effort into it than that. I'll get to it eventually. Because I'm playing Elden Ring still. Um, Elden Ring playthrough is going well. Um... I've beaten a lot of bosses at this point. I'm very highly leveled. I have a lot of cool equipment. But I still run across an occasional boss who just whoops me. I just ran into one last night called a, um, a falling and falling star beast thing that just trashed me. In fact, I ran into two versions of it. The smaller one trashed me, but I thought, well, I can beat this one. Then I ran into one at the top of a volcano that just whooped me. I don't even know how to beat it, actually. I went back up and tried several things. Now, there's a lot you can do. I can really prep for that. I'm kind of doing multiple things at the same time. That way, if I get bored of one, I jump to the other. So, uh, right now, I'm working at three different things that I'm jumping back and forth between. And when I... One, and I found that this really works for me in Elden Ring. When I get to a boss and it's really hard, I'm like, meh, I'll come back later. So I'm going through the, the city right now, which is huge, this city. And there's all kinds of mini-bosses that keep whooping up on me. Um, so I died several times and I was like, you know what, I'm going to come back and do this later. But it's really fun. It's all kinds of neat enemies in there. Um, I'm doing this Rani's Quest which right now I'm in this big underground river section with giant ants and things like that. And then I'm also in this volcano area. I'm jumping around in there doing that. So those are kind of the three areas I'm jumping back and forth in between. And every once in a while I get bored, I'll go off and look for some mini boss or something somewhere I haven't done yet. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm at 
just jumping around. Still having a lot of fun. Still not even a little bit bored. I do think, though, that I probably, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, will I ever beat the game? Because I wonder when I get to a boss, like when you get to the end, I know it's kind of linear. You get to the final few bosses, you've got to fight those bosses. And what if I can't beat them? Then I'll be like, I'm good. Because I really am. I, I've discovered so many cool things. I, like, yeah, I played this yesterday. I went through an area I never went through before. Um, found this, like, shortcut area where I fought some beast that was shooting magma out, some larval magma worm, the dragon thingamabob. Whooped up on that. Fortunately, I had some ice weapons. Um, and then I got a really cool sword from that, which I'm now messing with. So that was kind of fun, and I never even knew that area existed. The best thing I ate this weekend, I had some really nice Korean food. What are your thoughts on theremins? They're okay if used very, 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 very sp sparsely. Um, I find that they, that that's like, that's an instrument that can really like almost get on your nerves. It has like a vibe to it. And I don't know that I would want to listen to it, except maybe as part of some atmospheric music. Hi, I just watched this week's Boring Unbox. What happens to games you won't review? Like Salerno 43, which was a war game. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I don't review a game, then it just goes to a pile. It might go to another reviewer somewhere else, or it goes to Dice Tower Library. There's all kinds of things that can happen with it. Do you make smoothies at home in a fancy blender? No, I don't. I have in the past, but I don't normally. Hi, I just found your guy's channel. Welcome. I would like to get my very imaginative six-year-old into board games. He already likes playing the basics, but I want something a bit more imaginative. There's a ton of great kids' games out there. There's storytelling games. Um, if you look at the one game I just played uh, um, with my son, we just played it. I believe that's going up today, the video of it. So uh, let me quick pull up my schedule here. I'm going to... Look, 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 look. Um, now it's going up tomorrow. Quest Kids. Quest Kids going up at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Quest Kids is a good one for that. All right, back to questions. That wall rack behind you, it's holding Groot. Where'd you get it? Was it custom made? I'm looking for something similar. The rack itself came from Ikea. We saw them at Ikea. We're like, hey, that might be pretty good. And it was. How's the vibe in the office? Lots of buzz around Roy's GameFound. Well, I'm sure he's watching that. Uh, Roy's uh, Last Light is launching on uh, GameFound in uh, 47 minutes. So... Um, I'm sure, I mean, I know that's what he's been thinking about all day. I mean, I'm, we're all keeping an eye on it, I guess. I've been busy doing other things today, so I've been, it's, it's kind of on my background, but I'm sure it's not that way for Roy. Any update on the A-Team Top 100? Well, it's the same update as I said before. It's coming in May. So that's not too far away since we are in April. Top five heroes and top five villains you're looking forward to playing as or against with X-Men United? Nope, I have none. I'll just play with whatever. I'll, I'll pick my top after I'm done playing with them. But I have no aspirations other than that. Will I get a chance to meet Chief Sokoto at Dice Tower East this July? Or has he already attended it? And if so, did he enjoy it? Um, Chief Sokoto does not often share future events with me that I am part of. So that would spoil a lot of surprising for, for me. So I don't know. You probably wouldn't meet him if you did. He uses a thermal philopical, which is a way to mask his identity from many, many people. So you may have already met him and you don't know it. It's very, very possible. He's only been able to pull that on me, I think, uh, pi times. Um, one of the times I, I caught, I got it, you know, 14% into our conversation, which is why we say pi. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I wouldn't know, sorry. The Tom and Eric talks will be weekly. They will be bi-weekly. So we did one last week, 
and then there's one next week. Then there'll be one two weeks after that. Obviously, there might be some shakeups in there based on conventions and things like that. With the growth of the Dice Tower, do you see yourself taking a more business back-end oriented role and less of a review in front of the camera roll? No. No, I would bring on more people to take more. I mean, I'm working harder on the business back-end part, but I'm not going to step away from the camera. That's what I like doing. I like talking about board games. Um... We played Le Havre for the first time this weekend. Have you played the shortened version of the game? And if so, what's your opinion? The shortened version to me is just too fast. I get it. I mean, the the regular game's longer. I just played Le Havre two weeks ago, actually, with a couple guys. We had a great time playing through it. And I could see how you might say it feels a couple turns too long, possibly. I love the game, so it doesn't matter. Um... But the shortened version just is too fast. You start with so much. It's just so it doesn't feel like I got the game experience with it. Do you feel like 2022 is going to be a big year for improved editions of games? Castle Burgundy, Ra Through the Desert, etc. No, because they've been doing that now for the past decade. I don't know if you have noticed. Every year when we do the Dice Tower Awards and we do our top um our top 10 uh, and anticipated, or not anticipated games, our top 10 reprints and stuff, it's such a huge category. So 2022, I don't think it's going to be that year any more than, say, last year or the year before it was. What are your thoughts on the new Halo series show? I only saw the first episode. Realize I'm not a Halo fan. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not, not a fan of Halo. I just, I played it. A decade or so ago, I played it with some people, and we were all, like, shooting stuff and stuff. <laughs> Whatever. I just, I've never really gotten into that series. So, the the first episode of TV show is pretty cool special effects and everything, um, but I don't know much more than that. Which boss so far is the coolest design for you in Elden Ring? My favorite was, and I forget his name, Rondavan, the guy in the desert. That was my favorite battle I did, because it was so epic. Because you gallop on your horse towards me, he's shooting arrows and stuff at you. You're summoning all these people to go fight him at the same time. And it just felt very, just exciting in general. It just felt very cool. So much fun. That, that one was my favorite. What's the most expensive board game upgrade you've ever purchased for the Dice Tower Library? I don't know. I mean, it could be the upgrades for Quacks of Quedlingburg. Those things are pretty expensive. Just started getting in a dice throne and fell down a rabbit hole with it. Who are some of your favorite heroes? I like the Gunslinger. I like the Marvel. The Marvel ones a lot. We'll be reviewing the Marvel ones soonish. Ah, someone just asked that same question. Um, is the first Empire playthrough going to happen sometime? Probably not. We were talking about it. We're not particularly sure it would be a very interesting playthrough to watch. So uh, the review is going to happen, but I don't know that the playthrough will. Do you like squash? I don't hate it, but I would never pick it. Who manages the accounting-related stuff for Dice Tower? Um, oh, no, I'm not answering this question. Best larger group games that are younger, kid-friendly? First of all, if you have six, seven kids, you're playing party games. That's, that's, that's your choice if you're playing with that many kids. But for six-player six games, we're actually doing our top ten list on that next week. Was Vagrant Song of eligible for Dice Tower Awards? No, Vagrant Song is a 2022 game. I know it was on my list for Best of 2021. It's very confusing, but for the awards, we have to be much more strict, and the game has not a wild, wide release yet, so it has to be a 2022 game. Did you watch a television show, Severance? Go watch Board Game Breakfast today. I reviewed it in there. 
You see a lot of people bring their own games to Dice Tower Cruises or Cons. Sure, people have their own special games they want to play, or they want to make sure they play a game, or they've upgraded a game, or whatever might be the reason. A lot of people bring their own games. You must choose. No more video game or no more pie. I would do no more pie because I get to play lots and lots of video games and pie, I would just switch to ice cream or cake or something, you know. When you play the crude, you keep all the played cards face up or just the last trick. I believe according to the rules, and I don't have them in front of me, that it's just the last trick that stays face up. Because if you can play all the cards up, first of all, it will slow the game down to a halt. But it also makes the game much easier that you would just say, oh, these are the cards that are left in everybody's hands. But play whatever way your group wants to play. Ah, Chronicles of Crime. Here's the thing. I actually have the scenario with the Dice Tower promo cards. It's finished. It's ready to go. I haven't released it yet because I asked people to play test it. Several people responded and said they wanted to play test it. And then I didn't hear back from any of those people. So I don't know if it's, there's errors in it or not. And I didn't want to release it without errors. So if you're interested in, in play testing that behind the scenes so I can make sure that has no errors, email me at tom at dicetower.com. But you have to have those promos, and um, you have to have the promos, and you have to have Chronicles of Crime. With most of the original creators of Twilight Imperium 4 gone, do you think there'll be a Twilight Imperium 5? Not anytime soon. They just released the expansion for Twilight Imperium 4. With Gotham City Chronicles having such a bad rulebook, they've hired Paul Grogan to help rewrite it. Do you think you would revisit this game after that release? I don't know. Maybe. But, wow. I mean, what's that like? Hang on a second. Let me look something up here real quick. Yeah, okay, so it's been six years since Conan came out. Um, and it's been three years since Batman Gotham City Chronicles came out. I don't know. I don't know. It's been so long since they've done that. There is a new rule book that's out for it, I guess. I guess the new rule book's available now. You can find it online. I think I've already got rid of the game, actually. So... I'm pretty sure if I haven't got rid of it, I'm, I'm about to get rid of it or it was about to go. So I don't know. I don't often give games a big second chance like that. That just it, That's a lot of work on my end um, uh, to, to do that and also usually to what end. I mean, people already have the game, already have it. When, I, when you say we'll be working on Dice Tower Library, what exactly does this mean? Well, we're going through all the different games in Dice Tower Library and checking the pieces to make sure they're all there. Um, missing pieces, we got to fix them. We are reorganizing the shelves. There are always the games we review. I have to decide if they're going into the library or going out of the library. If they go into the library, they have to be barcoded. We have to, you know, I'm upgrading pieces for them. If I put a game in a library, often that means a game has to come out of the library. Like I just did a switcheroo about that today. I put a game in and pulled a game out. No, I won't tell you which ones. Um, I got um, one, two... I'm looking at games I'm about to review. Maybe three games here. There's like 20 games in this room. Three of them, two will go in the library. One might go in the library, right? I, I don't know. Uh, but um, then I have to figure out, am I putting it out on a new shelf? Or am I replacing a game? And if so, what game am I replacing, etc.? There's a lot of work that can be done in, in the library. What do you think about digital board games killing physical board games like Splendor, Agricola, etc.? I don't know if those have, I mean, in, for me specifically, Ascension and Gloomhaven that's happened with, but, yeah, okay. There's still other games I can play with people. It hasn't killed board games. It might have killed a couple of the percentage of thousands of games that are out there. Would you give up six inches in height to drop your voice down a register? You mean talk like this? I don't, well, first of all, I like being tall. 
and I don't mind that my voice is higher. Uh, if you think that my voice is bad for whatever reason, or if you think it sounds odd, there's not much more I can do about that. Um, so, so no. First time attending at this year's Dice Tower East, what's the first thing I should do? Well, I'll check into your hotel. But uh, if you mean at the con, just come on in. So what I might do is I might walk around. That, that would be, when I go to a convention, that's usually the first thing I do. Um, I walk around. I kind of get the lay of the land. Now, this is not a huge space. I mean, there's a big convention hall, and then there's a bunch of small rooms. Walk around to those. Look at the schedule. See, okay, is there an event I want to go to? And then I might just start walking around. I always go look at the libraries of cons. We have a cool library. It would be fun for you to see that. Um, and then after you're done looking at the library, to maybe go around and look for player one at signs. And look, right, these people need a player to join their game. Does the game look even remotely interesting? Jump in, and you might have a group of friends you'll play with the rest of the time. If not, you leave, go find another group. Have you seen a difference in traffic now that timestamps, chapters can be added to videos? I don't know, I, but I mean, I, I know it's a useful thing. That's why we've been adding them in. Ah, I need to do the, uh, the our giveaway. Let's get that going here. Um, so you can win a $10 gift certificate to Game Nerds. Game Nerds, who is soon, we don't know when, it might be in a month, might be in two, going to do their 24-hour giveaway. But every day they do a fantastic um, give uh, a real a great sale. And anyway, we're giving away a $10 gift certificate to them. And all you have to do to enter this is to email us at contest at dicetower.com. And in the subject line, put the word licorice, L-I-C-O-R-I-C-E. It looks like like a rice licorice and in the ant and the body do you like licorice and if so black or red i found a lot of people do not like licorice um have you ever seen a ufo i have not about how many games go into or out of the library each year that's a good question. I don't know. It's more than 50. Less than 100, maybe? Not a... Well, you know what, though? I don't know. That's, a, that's interesting. Because we know hundreds of games come out, but I look at all these games, and I'm pretty good now at saying... I mean, sometimes it's really easy. Like, no, 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 no. You know, these games aren't good. There's a couple games that I've said no to library, then I saw a big buzz online that people were really interested in it, and I'll go, well, okay, I guess I was wrong. And we put that in. But I'm usually correct on whether the game will be popular or not. Okay, I'm usually not correct that it... Very, There's very few games in a Dice Tower library. People come up and go, you don't have this game? That doesn't happen that often. And if it does, I'm usually like, yeah, you're the only person who wants to play it, or you're one of few. Um, if you go look at our library online and, and look at it, I challenge you to find like major holes that were missing. Like you're like, how I can't believe you don't have this game because we have a lot of great games. Um, where I might make a mistake is I don't put a game in the library because I'm like, this is not that great of a game, but then find out that I'm in the minority on that and a lot of people like it. I usually get it right. I put games in the library that I'm not a fan of, but I think other people will enjoy. But sometimes I, I think I don't like this and I don't think anyone else will either. And I'm quite wrong. Are you going to attend Essence Spiel? Yes, I am. Um, because I always get nervous about saying hi. I saw you walk in front of me at Essence years ago and did not have the guts to say hi. I want to say hi this year. Then say hi. I'm pretty easy to spot. That's one of the benefits of the way I dress. How many characters do I usually play with in Marvel United? Preferred count? Three. I love three, just because it's one, two, three, enemy action, one, two, three, enemy action. And with four characters, it, that breaks the flow up a little bit. Yes, I know that once you beat them up, it changes to every two, but just the three thing works for me. With the next generation of Vassals on the Horizon, what moniker are you going to go with? Grandpa, Granddad, Pops? It, I think I'm going to let my kids pick what they want their, their kids to call me. I suspect that... Some of my daughters, the kids will call me 
grandfather because many of my children call me father. Um, I don't know how it started. Well, I do know how it started. My, my daughter, Amy, started it. She calls me father, and she calls me father. Maybe it started out as an ironic thing, but it's not now. And so several of my kids call me that. Uh, I didn't give my opinion on Moon Knight because I am waiting until it's over. I usually wait till the series is over before I give my opinion on it. How interested are you to see what they changed in the Far Cry game now that they canceled the Kickstarter campaign? I did not know they canceled it. Let me look. Uh, Far Cry Kickstarter. Hmm. No, what's that? Huh. I need to go to Kickstarter to find it, I suppose. Let me look here. Far Cry, Far Cry. Huh. Well, I don't see it at all. Let me go to Kickstarter itself and look. You're right, it was canceled. It got launched, raised 32,000 with only 234 backers. They canceled it today. All right. So people did not like it particularly. Um, they said that the interest was not there. They weren't making enough money. Fair enough. They're going to go back and redo the entire game. Interesting. All right. Well, okay. Well, I don't have any really strong opinions on that. I will. I don't. Ha I haven't played Far Cry the video game, so we played it live here on the channel. But I can't give you any kind of like. Well, this felt like Far Cry. It didn't feel like Far Cry. I don't know enough about it to give that. It was like a one. You know, it was like a co-op. Go through and blow everything up. Um, so it was very, very difficult. Very difficult. I don't. I would prefer it to have been slightly easier. I think. I mean, we were going to die at the point we were at, but yeah, well, I guess I'll let the Far Cry fans handle that one. Hi, Tom. Can't wait to reunite with old friends at conventions. Oh, man, this is one of the best things about going to a convention is reuniting with people. It's a lot of fun. Thoughts on Daniel Radcliffe playing Weird Al in a biopic? Okay. I, I don't have any real strong thoughts on it one way or the other. Which is a larger open gaming area? They start east and west cons or the retreats? Well, it's west has the biggest area because it's the biggest one. Then east, then the retreat. It's just basically in size of the area. Um, I don't know. Don't hold me to this. I don't know exactly. I'll have to talk to Sharon because I'm sure she's told me and I forgot. But I don't know dreadfully how much bigger Dice Tower East is going to expand. I said we weren't going to expand it that much, and I mean that. I want to keep the convention in a manageable number where we can handle it, and it doesn't feel like we've gotten overwhelmed by just a number of people. Dice Tower West, on the other hand, is probably going to grow and expand, and Dice Tower Retreat's going to stay small. So, uh, yeah, so they all have opened, I mean, even at the Retreat, which is the smallest one, I ne have never seen anyone really have a problem getting into open gaming. Bought our tickets for Dice Tower East. The wife and I consider volunteering. We do need volunteers for Dice Tower East, yes. We like to volunteer together. Well, I don't know about that. You can email uh, Camilla at Dicetower.com and tell her this, and maybe she can work that out for you. And we've been concerned about being scheduled during a live top 10. Well, good news on that. There is no live top 10 at Dice Tower East. We're doing a couple game shows there. Um, but there is no live top 10. Not at Dice Tower East this year, because at Dice Tower East this year, 
we this is the first time we've run it, so the Dice Tower crew is actually spending a lot of our time actually running the con. We're volunteering right there next to you. So uh, that's why there's not a top 10 there this year. Are we going to pack some plug this year? Yes, that's our uh, that's our goal. Oh, and it's got a thumbs down. What did I say? Oh, it must have been the no top 10 at Dice Terry. Sorry. Oh, yeah, Core Quest is a good one to play with your kid, too. The uh, person who asked that earlier. Um... With games you've upgraded, do you find people get confused when they read the rule book and the components look different than the original ones? I try not to make them that confusing. Usually you're like, where? I mean, it's usually not difficult because you'll be like, it says wooden pieces and it shows brown cubes, but all we got is this bag full of wood. What are the? What is the wood? That's why I'm not worried about it because it's really obvious for the most part. If it's not obvious, I, I don't know. I've never had anyone complain about it. I, f I feel like for the most part, it's pretty obvious. Ah, uh, yes. Hero says, I'm assuming sarcastically, letting the youngest familiar generation determine the patriarchal figure's name. I guess I just don't care. Why do I mean, why, why would that be a big deal? It, it, it's, it's not... Let them, I don't know why I, 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 I don't know why I care. Like, oh, you call me grandfather. I want it to be called granddaddy or poppy. I, I, I'm just glad that I'm going to have a grandkid. I'm really excited about that. What have you learned about speaking in front of the camera that I can use in my own videos? The main thing about speaking in front of the camera is you need to act that that's a real person sitting there. Like, when I talk to you all, I'm talking to you. And I, I mean, I can tell a lot of people don't do this. They are just talking. And I don't mean this as a detriment. I'm not saying I'm better than other people at, at, at doing this. But when I talk, even when I'm doing a review, that's really easy when I'm live because I am talking to you because you're literally there. You're just uh, somewhere else in the world. Um, but even when you're recording, that camera is as if there's a person there and I need to be as excited with them and I get it. A lot of people are kind of camera shy. It's awkward. It's weird. It's especially weird if there's someone else in the room kind of staring at you and you're not talking to them. You're talking to an invisible person. But you imagine that. Morph that camera into a person and talk to them. That, that, that I found to be pretty helpful. Are you getting close to releasing this year's Pledge Manager? Really close. I am waiting on Kenny to give me a date on when we launch it and it's launched. Cody says, I haven't been on a Q&A in a while, but it seems that the fuchsia text is kind of hard to read compared to the old blue text. Looks blue to me, Cody. All right. Um, do you have any big Easter plans? Sure. We do Easter at our church. Um, so I'm involved. I'm doing a waffle bar. So if you're in the Homestead area, folks. We welcome you to come join us at our church. I'm doing a waffle bar at 9 o'clock, um, and I got my toppings ready for it. Got to be honest, it's kind of a sidestep from a, uh, um, a ice cream bar. But here's what we got for, for waffles. And so, butter, syrup, chocolate syrup, strawberry syrup, raspberry syrup, dark chocolate syrup, caramel syrup, marshmallows, marshmallow spread, strawberry marshmallow spread to be exact. Apple pie filling, cherry pie filling, fresh blueberries, um, fresh bananas, probably fresh raspberries. I haven't decided on that one yet, but probably. It depends on the price at the store. Um, sprinkles, chocolate chips, M&Ms, um, crushed Oreo cookies. Uh, I wrote all this stuff out. Um, and several other toppings of an undetermined nature, which I don't have all of me at the time. So we're going to do that. And there'll also be sausage and eggs and stuff like that. But real sausage, not that nasty breakfast sausage. Who do, I don't understand why people have, like, 
giving up their sausage rights to eat that nasty breakfast sausage when the world literally has hundreds of amazing sausages all over. But when, if you ever eat breakfast with me, you're not getting that nasty breakfast sausage. Then we're having church in our church service at our, at our church. And when that's done, then I'm going home and I'm making dinner at home. Uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm making yet, um, but it's probably going to be uh, shrimp and sausage because that's been our traditional Easter meal. All right. What's the worst job you've worked? My least favorite job? I guess my least favorite job. I like so many of my jobs. I worked at a print shop. I didn't particularly like the, the boss there. He was not a very nice person. So maybe because of that, and I also, one year, summer, or I don't know how long it was, three or four months, I worked third shift, and I really dislike that. I don't like working third shift. Because psychologically, working third shift is just a real pain in the neck. Because you count down the time until you go to work. Even though you work and you sleep the same time, psychologically it's difficult. You get off work, and then when you get off work, you need to go to bed as soon as you can. But usually right after work, you're not really that tired. You're kind of still ready to go. So I'd go home, eat whatever, breakfast or whatever. And then I remember I would watch TV or something. And I'm like, I got to go to bed. It's light outside. Put the shades down. Force yourself to sleep. Then my wife would get home. And then I'm awake, right? But we would be doing something together or whatever. And you look at the clock and... Oh, I got to be at work at, at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, whatever time it was. And it's 5 o'clock, 5 hours to work, 4 hours to work, 3 hours to work, 2 hours. It's just this, it's this dread, this constant countdown dread. I don't know how to explain it. Like when you worked in the morning, you get up and you're like, I got to go to work. Because that countdown period, you're sleeping during it. So you say, well, you could just stay up during the day and then sleep. But then I wouldn't see my wife and everything. I Now... Suffice it to say, these are both better than second shift. I think second shift is the worst. I did that one summer when I was a college student working second shift, and I disliked that because I would have off during the day and nobody else was around except for the other second shift workers. Then you go into work at, I don't remember what time we went into work, at 4 or 5 or whatever, and work till 2 or 3 in the morning, and then... You get off, you go right to bed, and it, and you have that dread, but it's even worse because, ah, second shift, I don't like it. I just wanted to give props on the Ark Nova prediction saying it would be in the top 50 by the end of the year, which I thought was crazy, and it's already number 34 in April. Ah, I just, I had, I had a strong feeling about that one. And I think it's it's going to continue to do well. I love how there's a different opening for each of the spectaculars, but that's all props to Roy and Chris and Mike who put all that stuff together. On the cruise, has a game ever been dropped in the water? I don't think so. Why? Are people taking it and holding it over the side of the ship? I don't know that anything's been dropped in the water, for at least from us. <laughs> Did you watch the trailer for Stranger Things 4? Looks like a lot of time is going to be spent in the upside down. It looks more horrorish than the other ones. I mean, I guess Stranger Things is always tilted towards horror a little bit, but this one felt very horrorish. Well, we'll see. Sean says, I have to say, at Dice Tower West, even with the amount of people there, it was easy to find an open table to play at or one to join. Well, that's great. K2 
Can you still get badges for Dice Tower East? No, Dice Tower East has sold out. However, that being said, you can go to Dice Tower East and try to get on a waiting list there. Join the Facebook group. You'll find out there are people who likely will give up their tickets, and you'll have a chance to buy their badges from them. Having watched behind the scenes from Tom's eyes, how do you fit in playing games enough times to review them? You seem so busy with other things, even into the evenings. You just get the games played when you can play them. Do you think Arc Nova will be number one at, on BGG by this time next week? No. That's not how you move into number one. No. Hi, Invisible Person, probably Royal Mike in the room watching Tom talk to the camera. Tell Actually, there's nobody here in the room with me. They're all out doing stuff. I don't need someone here keeping an eye on me, but I'm just saying it happens a lot of times if the camera was moving or whatever it might be. Ice cream bar and waffle bar do not need to be mutually exclusive. I agree. No fried chicken for the waffles. Well, <clears throat> as it stands out, yes. We're not doing fried chicken. We're doing uh, like chicken tenders or popcorn chicken. So that's close, right? Although I still, I need someone to explain this to me. This chicken and waffles thing. So I never even heard of chicken and waffles when I was growing up. When I became an adult, I heard people like chicken and waffles. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try anything. So I got chicken and waffles and I got chicken and waffles at multiple places, including Atlanta. And every time I've tried it, you know what it tastes like? It tastes like chicken and waffles. There's no magical combination. It's not like home. It's not like, you know, for example, peanut butter and chocolate, which I know some of you don't like, but you're wrong. But peanut butter and chocolate, I find peanut butter to be fine. I find chocolate to be good. You put them together and it's unbelievable, the combination. But when I hate waffles and chicken together, I was like, I'm eating waffles and chicken together. There wasn't like some magical, delicious combination. I don't get it. I, I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. I just don't get the fascination with it. A waffle bar YouTube channel sounds a lot better than a board game channel. Thanks, David. <laughs> What's my favorite Korean food? Bude chige. Where can I find a copy of Nothing Personal these days? More importantly, when can I expect another game by the rare unicorn of a designer? Ah, there is no plans and there's no game in the works for me right now. Although, Nothing Personal had two designers. The other one was Steve Avery. I don't know where you can buy Nothing Personal. Probably at a thrift store. By nasty breakfast sausage, you mean the stuff in the plastic roll packs, Jimmy Dean, Bob Evans? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Like if you get a sausage sandwich from McDonald's, that gray, very, very salty sausage that no one ever eats any other time except at breakfast. And so you go, it's called breakfast sausage in the stores. Not me. With me, you're getting kielbasa or Italian sausage or Argentinian sausage or I just had Portuguese sausage, which was amazing, or some kind of sausage. It's happening. I am not making you breakfast sausage. I refuse. With Dice Series 2022 being sold out, will that mean more people than 2019? No, it's 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 a hundred percent smaller than 2019. Not a hundred percent smaller, but I mean it's definitely smaller than 2019 on purpose by design. Thank you. Breakfast sausage is garbage and bacon is right there for breakfast meat. Well, I actually like sausage better than bacon, not breakfast sausage. Again, I don't think that's, I don't even know what that meat is. But I like, I like uh, sausage way more than bacon. I'll always get a sausage sandwich over a bacon and egg sandwich. I'll get a sausage and egg, even with that nasty sausage. I just like sausage, but I'm a huge fan of Italian sausage. Scrapple is, uh, Scrapple's fine, I guess. I just don't understand why people pick it. Like Spam, is like a Spam, Scrapple, they're not too far off from each other. But Spam, people are like, oh, fried Spam, my kids love Spam. But my question is, why would you ever eat Spam when you can eat ham? I know Spam is cheaper, so maybe that's what it is, but 
All other things being equal, I'd like some ham, please. Everyone's talking about how knights are rough. You said the global breeding card in Ark Nova was your favorite card. Would you hold on to it if it had, if you had it in your opening hand? I don't know, maybe. That, your opening hand is so small, though, so maybe not. It would make me sad. Does anyone in the Dice Star staff use curse words around the office or when they're off camera? Or is that a no-no while at work? Guess you'd have to work here to find out. Just leave it to your imagination. How often do people send you prototypes of playtests? Very infrequently, because if you email me and ask me, I'll say, no, thank you. We don't have the time to do it. Arkanova is 34 on BGG. It's pretty good considering no U.S. release yet. It's definitely been released in the U.S. It just has sold out instantly. But it's definitely been released by Capstone. Shrimp and grits is where it's at. You know, David, I was thinking about this because I took my kids out to eat over the weekend and we went to a place that had shrimp and grits. And I looked at it and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and finally said no. And here's why. Because while shrimp is the most amazing food on the planet, grits can be so wildly all over the place. I hate grits, I thought, until I had really good grits. Then I was like, wait a minute. This is what, because I was introduced to grits at college. So I had college grits. I had grits from other people too. I never liked it at all. And then when I had grits at a really, it was at a restaurant in Atlanta, actually. I had, I had some, I'm like, this, this is not bad. What is this? They're like grits. I'm like, I did not know grits tasted like this. The problem is I don't want to take that chance. Severance gave me a strong black mirror vibe. Yes, I agree. Very, very black mirror-y. What's the schedule for Table Talk? People keep asking. We'll be on next Monday. Although we do have a Table Talk that uh, it's on the podcast. You can go. The, we got the podcast feed up now. I'm trying to get it on iTunes, which, by the way, is a real pain in the neck. So we'll be posting that audio show to there. If you're going to review Vicious Fishes now, will it receive a seal of approval or a seal of excellence? It would receive neither. I think there's some flaws in the game that I can't figure out how to beat. Anything special planned for 300k subs? Are we close? We'll have to wait and find out. What is Scrapple? Well, let's see what the... Uh Let's see what the internet says Scrapple is. Scrapple, known by the Pennsylvania Dutch name Panhaus, never heard anyone call it that, everyone calls it Scrapple, is a mush of pork scraps and trimmings combined with cornmeal and wheat flour. Often buckwheat flour and spices. This mush, this is not making it sound good at all, is formed into a semi-solid congealed loaf and slices of the Scrapple are then pan fried before serving. Scraps of meat left over from butchering, not used or sold elsewhere, were made into Scrapple to avoid West. It's best known as an American food of the southern mid-Atlantic states like Pennsylvania and Virginia and Delaware, etc. It's an ethnic food of the Pennsylvania Dutch, which is where I grew up. You can get Scrapple sandwiches. Again, I just would never pick this over, let's say, any other meat. Um, what's your character and stat build in Elden Ring? I just up my strength and agility and my endurance really high. I've ignored magic completely. I'm debating on like, building some magic just so I can cast some spells and see what happens. But for the most part, I, I really like... I really like um, messing around with just going up and slashing the enemy. What's my favorite magic card? I don't know. 
I like all kinds of magic cards. I don't know if I have a top 10 Magic the Gathering cards. I'd be afraid to do that. I would get eviscerated by Magic the Gathering players. It's going to retail release on April 19th. It's not being released in the U.S. But, but if you allow pre-orders and sell thousands of games to people in America, I would consider that being released in that country. <laughs> I mean, it just because it has any retail stores, it's still sold. Um, like Kickstarters, that happens with. And I don't go, what hasn't come out yet? Well, the Kickstarter got sent to people. Did I watch the Nothing Personal Included, or I'm sorry, No Pun Included, Nothing Personal, No Pun Included review of Ark Nova, Efka's main complaint was size of the deck, what do you think of that criticism? I have heard people say that before, that just hasn't ever bothered me, that's all, it just doesn't bother me. Um... Let's see here... You would like the South African food biltong. So biltong here, uh, when I looked that one up, that actually I like a lot. I didn't know it was South African. I just thought it was another way. I guess it does come from South Africa initially. Uh, it's another way to make basically beef jerky. You're right. It is a way. It originated in South African countries like South Africa, Zimbabwe, uh, Botswana, and Zambia, etc. Cool. I've had it. I actually like it better than beef jerky, but it's very pricey. I've only gotten a bit of it. It has a more earthy flavor to it, but I heard it has a lot less natural preservatives in it. I was reading, I, I saw somewhere, I was reading people talk about it, and I was like, I need to try some of this. And I was actually at a store, a beef jerky store yesterday. Um, <laughs> was that yesterday? Two days ago, I was at a beef jerky store. And um, I saw some there, and I was like, oh, I could get a little bit of biltong. Or a lot of beef jerky. I went with a lot of beef jerky because, again, I like it, but I don't know that it's like twice as good. I believe you read a lot of books. Is there a book you reread every now and then? Actually, I, jump, I do that all the time. I, I would say I probably read a new book, and then I jump back and read an old book I've already read before. I get enjoyment out of reading stuff second times. Um, has Champions replaced your Marvel Legendary shelf space? No. Well, they're very different games anyway. And I still like Legendary better. Have you tried Magic the Gathering Jumpstart? Magic the Gathering Jumpstart? Oh, I forgot about this. That's right, you pick two themed boosters and put them together. Is this out yet? Uh, I, I, oh, I guess it, wait a minute, when did that, did that say it's being released 2020? <laughs> okay, well, I guess I must have missed that completely. I remember reading about that and then uh, I think we even talked about it on, um, on the channel. Yeah. This looks new. I don't remember seeing this before. Well, maybe it's not new. Combine your packs. Best of three wins. Has a ton of views. Do not buy. If, oh, this is a, uh, oh, because it came out during COVID. That's why I didn't see it. Meh. Well, I'll have to try it. I mean, that'd be silly not to try something new out. That sounds fun. I would disagree. You can buy tickets to a movie ahead of time, but that does not mean it's been released. You can play or watch the movie in this instance. Well, no, a lot of people have gotten Ark Nova. I know this because at Dice Tower West, there were dozens and dozens and dozens of people carrying Ark Nova around that they had pre-ordered from Capstone and had gotten and brought with them. So the, it was released. They got it. A lot of people then were like, we also would like to get it. So they did a second printing, which I think those pre-orders have not shipped yet. 
but just because you haven't got it doesn't mean it's not out yet. Again, I don't even know why this is not. I don't know why I'm arguing over this. Who cares? You you win. It's not out yet. It doesn't really matter. What is the cost of buying a vow in Gutenberg? <laughs> one more than the letters you already have. Are you one of the people I taught incorrectly? It's possible, but what's your favorite nut? Cashews. But I do like filberts a lot. You ever tried Greek food? Yeah, me and my wife just ate Greek food a couple weeks ago, and I was like, man, I really like Greek food. Sometime I'll do my top 10 ethnic foods. Um, as an American saying that, obviously. Um, will there be a Chris Yee is wrong video? Maybe at some point. Let's see here. To me, sovlaki is a staple Greek food, like saying someone doesn't know what sushi is. Yeah, but you just said you didn't know what scrapple was. I think we should always be very careful to criticize other people at not knowing something exists or having heard of it. No one can know everything. And I was just talking about this the other day because we were... Oh, yeah, because the guys were getting in my case because I didn't know what that chocolate brand was. And the people in there are like, how can you not know? And I guess I just didn't know. But I could pull all kinds of things out that you wouldn't know that I know and then make you feel dumb for not having heard of them. Look at it this way. If you meet someone who doesn't know something that you think they should know, then look at it as an amazing opportunity to introduce it to them so you can see someone else's reaction to it for the first time. That's really cool. But if you look at them and scorn them for not knowing, you've kind of lost a connection with them, usually. And I've done this, too, so I'm not being holier than thou. I've definitely done it with people in the past, too. What does the process look like for new game creators to request reviews from the Dice Tower? Well, the game creator doesn't normally do it. It's the publisher who does it. The publisher emails me and says, I have a new game. And I say, oh, you do? Okay. And I always check to make sure it's published because a lot of people are doing... Um, you know, it's their way to find out, you know, to get it for Kickstarter. But, you know, I, I, I would not, I, I, if it's published and I say send it to us, and I always say the same thing, it's not guaranteed, it's not guaranteed that you will get uh, a review of it. All right. Let's see here. What's the name of the new podcast? At the Table with Tom and Eric. Um, when will it show up in the feed? We're the So we record it live. We'll record it live on our video channel on Mondays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will then go up early Friday morning on the podcast channel. It gives us some time to edit it and everything to get it from one to the other. Uh, it hasn't shown up in the uh, iTunes feeds or other feeds yet. You... I'm going to start publicizing the link to it. I put it out already. You, we put the first show up on the Dice Tower feed, which, let me see if anybody has gotten that one. Let me pull that up. I was wondering that just now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you, I know if you go to Libsyn, it's at the table, at the table with Tom and Eric. But let me go to... Dice Tower. So I know that around 10,000 people got that one. So they knew it. Oh, yeah, 10,000 people heard it from the other, the other channel. So, uh, yeah. Although it's funny. It looks like... Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I'm getting off topic here. And you know what? I just realized we're done. So, all righty. Well, that's it for today, folks. I hope that you all have a fantastic day. Remember, Roy's 
uh, game that he designed, Last Light, has just launched on GameFound. So you can go there to back it. Just go to GameFound.com. It's right there on the main page. Uh, thank you, everybody who asked questions. We got more videos that are coming out over the next couple days. We got um, uh, the next live thing is tomorrow, crowd surfing. So we'll be taking a look at different projects on Kickstarter and other places. So we hope to see you then. But that's it for this time, folks. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Q&A on the Dice Tower. Let's get that next game ready for review. goes there and there I got the next ones ready to go alrighty well there we have it hey everybody I'm Tom Vassell thanks for watching the Dice Tower or welcome to oh, I gotta restart it all right let's try again hey everybody I'm Tom Vassell welcome so much huh I don't think that one was very good either. Also, I just heard an Amazon package showed up. All right, let's try that again. Hey, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower.